Now we're gonna start doing some static analysis. Uh, we're gonna focus on Binary Ninja. Uh, there's some things I like about Binary Ninja. It's, uh, it's pretty cheap, uh, especially when you compare it to IDA Pro. Uh, I think the license is only $299 uh, for a single user. I think $1199 for commercial use. For commercial use. Um, and if you're a student, it's like only like 75 bucks. Um, so I definitely took advantage of that. Um, they have great support through their Slack channel. Um, they're always willing to help. Anytime I had a bug or anything, I go in there, they actually help me out. Um, there's also a good community, so if you need some help, you can jump in there and people are actually willing to help you out. Uh, there's companies like Trail of Bits that use them. Um, it also has a uh, plugin support, so you can make your own plugins if you need, if you want, or there's all the, uh, all the people in the community that make plugins for it. Um, I know there's, there's been uh, times where people, uh, need to make their own like support for a certain architecture that's not supported and they use the, the plugin uh, you know the API to uh, basically build their own plugin. Uh, it's multi-platform so you can use it in Windows, Linux and OS X. Uh, now it has a uh, decompiler support uh, they call it a uh, high-level AL and uh, works pretty good. Um, and what else do we have here? They have uh, oh they're working on their own debugger um, once they get that figured out, I think it's, I mean, it's already a pretty solid package, but I mean, that definitely makes it a, a really good deal. Um, and there's also all the little tools inside of it that I will show you as we go here. So let's look at, first, um, let's refresh on this thing. Let's see, we use, oh, what is that? The RE demo, right? So it's gonna be, so we ran it last time and we've seen that it's asking for a password. Password. Okay. And that ends that. So let's look at this. We have some kind of idea. So um, let, uh, the, this window here, it's like a triage window and it kind of gives you some information. It's kind of similar to like what P bear does. Um, so it tells you it's a P64 bit. Uh, let's see what other good stuff. Okay, so this imports this to things here, what else we have? Okay, well, it's kinda, I don't really use this window too much. Um, but here's a, a, one thing to know is that it has entropy here. Uh, entropy uh, it's, can be useful because, um, so if you have encrypted data or data that's compressed, it will show up with higher entropy. So that means something to keep in mind, maybe something interesting to look at. All right, let's go look. Let me open that up again. So let's look at main, right? That's kind of where we're gonna start. All right, so let's change this to low level assembly and assembly graph. Okay, all right, let's go back to main. Okay, so this is kind of what the bare assembly kind of looks like when we're looking at the program here. And so, um, so if you know, some assembly, you can start making things out. So let's see here. So what's good here? So this is kind of interesting. Password. Okay. So what else do we have here? This one's kind of interesting as well. This is if password equals equals. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's, what else do we have here? Okay, this is the first string that we saw, right? That gets printed out. Let's kind of use this a little bit. All right. So we have prints this out here. That's kind of what we had here. Okay, so so we can start doing things with this. For example, one, some of the things that I'll do is on their comment be like, um, first print it. So that's cool because um, by doing this, you're, you're starting to build a picture. It gives you something to go off of. So, okay, so at least you know this is kind of where we start here. All right. And then, so it loads this, and then it, it makes a call to put as, which means that this is the argument for put as. That's when it's going to print that out. Okay. Uh, and then, let's see what we have here. some kind of compare 
Okay, this is the, ne the next section that we're interested in. And so this is where kind of learning the tool comes in handy, for example. Well, I know this is, for example, this part is important because I know that we, this is where we enter the, the password. So maybe I want to, uh, let's, where is it at? Highlight the instruction. Okay, I want to highlight the instruction, maybe in orange. So that way when I come around again, when I'm looking at the assembly again, I can go back here. And, and I know this is kind of, this is an area of interest. Okay. Let's see what else. Okay, here's that scan F. Okay. Okay, it's do nothing. Okay, that's interesting. So this is a call to the function do nothing. And if you look at here, this, here's the function. And you can go either just click the function like this and look at it, or we can go back to main and go here and just click that. So here we go. So what's do nothing doing? Uh, do some garbage stuff. It makes a call to malloc. So it's allocating some space. All right, that's interesting. All right, cool. And we can use these arrows to navigate back and forth. Uh, call the simple obfuscation. All right, let's check that out. Okay, another call to malloc. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Looks like it might be building something in here. And over here, this is string compare. That's probably where, when we input that string, uh, it's gonna compare maybe, maybe with a string somewhere else. Maybe the, maybe the string, it looks like maybe the string might be built here. And I'll return it, okay? Cool, all right. So, let's build the, like I said, I keep talking about building a puzzle, right? So let's let's see. This is something that I, I have typically done in the past as well, where I might say, okay, so it looks like there is this print F here. And I'll say print F, right? Um, if I can spell it. Okay, that's good enough for us at this point. Let's do that. Okay. So that kind of, okay, that's kind of like the start. As far as we're concerned, it's kind of the start of the program. All right, and then we'll go ahead and go here. And we'll say, let's we'll do this put as, right? So let's do that. Let's do another print def. password okay and then there's a scan F right call to scan F or whatever was put in there okay so then we can do a scan F let's see it's gonna be a string so we can do that and we can do some place to put it, right? So let's put, let's try, let's see, just call it. Just make it 60 for now. Okay, we'll keep it simple. All right, so we'll do that. If uh, 
after you take the cereal, then password, and you can say printf, correct password. Okay, cool. Else, else what do we have? What do we print out on this thing? God's gonna do for me today. So, okay, sure. So, enter password. Okay, that's cool. So pass. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, so see, we're already building a picture here, somewhat of what this program's doing. Key thing here is we're, we're missing the password, right? We don't see it here. It's interesting. All right, so. Let's move on a little bit and let me show you um, some of the other features of Binary Ninja. Uh, as far kind of like as, as looking at the code like this goes, right? Um, for one thing, we have the, the address here and we got the opcode, right? Shell code, whatever you want to call it. So here we go. And then we have this, this uh, different levels of the IL. That's the, that's the language, uh, the intermediate language that uh, Binary Ninja uses. So you can go low level IL, which kind of condenses things a little smaller. It makes it, uh, it's starting to make it a little bit more like C. Basically, see, so now you have like an if statement here, kind of, that kind of stuff. All right, so now we can move up to the medium level IL and it condenses it some more. But here is, you know, what basically the decompiler is the high level IL. And that's a lot more like you know like C and that's that looks a lot easier to read and a lot easier to work with and it's pretty I mean this is really powerful right I mean you can skip kind of a lot of the lower level stuff uh, but um, it's important to know um, but here it is it kind of okay gives me a picture put S all right and it's doing some comparisons here enter password it does scan F saves it in the variable uh, it has this Function do nothing. Simple obfuscation. Okay, so now we can see we can see that it's returning this into here, right? So let's let's rename that to make to make more sense of what's going on. If you build in that picture, we can change that to let's change it to let's see password. Let's say to stored password, maybe. Okay. Stored password. Okay. So it looks like to me that maybe this function here is building a password. So here we look. So now we can see, okay, this is, let's see here. We'll change this. Let's call this dynamic password. Okay, ooh, it's also good. Okay. All right, so nice. Okay, so it looks like to me we'll build a character. So let's change this. To a change type. Uh, no, that's not that. Let's see. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. Display as character. Okay. As character. Sweet. Interesting. Okay. So display as character. Boom. Okay, so it looks like our password might be capital P A S S A S S. Okay. Um. All right. I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna continue this on in the next video.